Good day all, and welcome to another exciting Dad the Aviator video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Cheers. Hey folks, it's Dag. So I've been asked many times if I could do a much deeper dive on this Brewster Buffalo landing gear that I designed. And a little bit of the backstory is a buddy of mine, who unfortunately is deceased now, really good guy, came to me and said, hey, I want to build this Brewster, but I don't have any idea how to build landing gear. And I know I'm going to build the airplane, but for me to really get, you know, all jazzed up, I, I need someone to build a landing gear. So essentially I told him, hey, let me do some research and I'll look into it and I'll let you know within the next couple of weeks if I could build it. Before I get too far into this, I want to do a shout out to my sponsor, RTL Fasteners. They're a really cool company, folks. If you go to their website, you'll see all their bolts, nuts, blind nuts, lock nuts, basically everything you need for the hobby. So if you use code DAG25 and you buy more than $25 worth of product, you will get 25% off. So code DAG25, buy more than $25 of items and you will get 25% off your order. So the first thing I do when I'm going to design a landing gear for a plane is I try to find documentation. I try to find cutaways. I try to find three views. I try to find uh, exposed components. I really do a deep dive into trying to find documentation on how the landing gear works and how it's mounted. And this is many times very, very difficult, especially on an old plane that's a little bit more obscure. You know, like this picture right here I found of the gears partially being retracted really helped me a lot on understanding some of the geometry that was going on. Because when the gears are down, the wheels have zero toe in, but when the gears are all the way up, they form to the shape of the fuselage. And when you start to think about the mechanism that moves them. You know, some of these planes had hand cranks. Some of them were electric. This has a lead screw, a jack screw, that's going to actuate parts. And it gets really frustrating when you're trying to figure out how to do it right. Now, I did luck out when I found these drawings because these drawings ended up helping me the most. It gave me uh, a way to scale what the lengths of different struts would be, what the attachment points may be. It really gave me... Um, a lot of insight, especially if you, and I, and I want you to remember some of these views you're looking at here, because when I go to draw it in Fusion 360, I kind of amazed myself how close I got this to being like the full scale aircraft. But each of these, especially, you know, kind of take a mental picture of what this looks like, because as I get into Fusion 360 to start creating some of the stuff, it was really, really cool how well it worked. So here is my Fusion 360 uh, finished design. I had a lot of mock-ups and it took me a long time to do this. But once I had committed to my PAL, I knew I, I, I wanted to make this as close as I could but to, be, to both being scale and being something that would function. Look at the upper left-hand uh, diagram now and you can see how close I really got this to be uh, as scale as I could. Okay, And I am just really excited with the way overall this turned out but but keep in mind all the geometry here i was really uh frustrated uh many times with the geometry and like look in the upper right hand corner at this diagram you can clearly see that my geometry is really close to being that of the uh you know the real booster brewster buffalo one of the things early on is this bulkhead here i didn't realize how much i had to cut out to get the landing gear to retract into it so in Fusion, you know, you design it and you can, you know, create it so that it works uh, mechanically just like the real aircraft. And this is where it was kind of a head scratcher for me also. But look at how these angles are with it up and then look at the diagram in the upper right hand corner and you can really start to appreciate how close I got this. So, uh, it's crazy when you design landing gear, folks, because there's so much geometry going on in there that we really don't notice when an airplane just sitting on the ground. Rarely do we see at like an air show a landing gear up when we're like 10 feet from the airplane. 
So when the uh, when we're designing all of this, it really, really uh, becomes a challenge to make sure you're getting this right, both for when it's sitting on the ground and when it's up. So the way I decided to tackle this was was a 3D print the struts, and then I was going to use spackling putty and other things to fill it, so I could sand and paint it to make a plug. So here are the finished plugs, and uh, then I waxed this and put some mold release on it, and. Uh, basically I'm going to create carbon fiber shells of the landing gear, if that makes sense. So here is the uh, plugs being pushed into clay because you want to build a two-part mold. And you're going to fiberglass this up and then pull the clay off and fiberglass the other side. You then end up with two molds that look just like this. And now look, these were one-use molds, folks. If I was going to make these landing gears for people, I would have made the molds a lot better. So the original plans show plywood landing gear uh, struts for this. And I want to do these out of carbon fiber because I, I love to work with carbon fiber. And if you do it right, it's super light, super strong. But you just can't throw a carbon fiber on something and say it's going to be lighter. You've got to understand how to use it. So there was a front half and back half. I did create a little lip around this. So when I would sandwich them together in epoxy, and hopefully they would stick together. And actually, it worked out perfect, folks. I was so excited with how these turned out, and they felt like they had helium in them. They weighed virtually nothing when it was done. And I, uh, you know, when I popped them out, I realized I needed to do a little bit of filling with some uh, epoxy and micro balloons. But realistically, folks, that sitting right there is awesome. Now, there's a bearing at where the strut attach, attaches to the wing, and then you've got the strut at the bottom where there'll be a spring and some suspension. But this turned out extremely good. And um, But there's a lot of time involved in this. Here is showing the two uh, sandwiched together with it curing inside it. And, um, yeah, I really don't know how to describe... Well, the timeline on this, it took me a couple of weeks, but I was really happy with it. So I want to talk a little bit about the actual strut that uh, and how it works. There is a spring inside the bottom. That I needed to put some suspension in it, and I didn't want it just to be a hard landing. And it took a little bit of head scratching, and here's uh, the mock-up being tested. There's a groove uh, cut in the back with a Dremel and a little 440 bolt. And that is what keeps it from coming apart and keeps it from rotating. But this turned out really good. So here we see the actuator that I came up with in my head. So it's a 12 volt motor. It's all mostly, most of it's 3D printed. A couple of limit switches that you need to be able to adjust and you need to fine tune adjust the limit switches. The white thing is what I call a shuttle, which carries um, some mechanism that, that pushes the, that pulls the struts to pull the landing gear up. And there's an Acme screw in there, and then there's thrust bearings. And the way I came up with this is in, in Fusion 360, I measured what the distance needed to be for something to move to fully retract the landing gears. So once I drew that, I then drew the track, and then from there on, it was really easy. I knew I had to put a motor. I knew, to have, I, knew I had to have thrust bearings. I knew I was going to have to have a place for the controller. One of my best friends, uh, Burger De La Pena, is the greatest controls designer for me. And uh, he just does a fabulous job. And I don't think I could do the cool things I do in life without being friends with him. Because uh, I just call him up and say, look, I need a way for a, you know, a uh, RC radio to tell it to go up and down. I need it to be 12 volts. I need it to be able to carry so many amps. And he basically designs me the little um, control card and sends it to me and I hook it up. It's really cool. So when I design Infusion 360, I, I, you have to, how do I say this? You need to make sure you know which way your 3D printer prints its layers. Because 3D printing is very much like wood. You know, it's hard to break a 2x4 across the grain, but to split a 2x4 down the grain with an axe is pretty easy. So when you're designing all these components, you got to think structurally, what are they going to do? Because just to 3D print apart and slap something on it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be structurally strong enough to carry whatever load you're going to put on it. So right here, the red part is what I call the track and motor system. The gray parts are the actual tracks. 
The yellow is the base mounts for the limit switches because you got to be able to slide those up and down that little uh, track there. I mean, the little um, guide rail. And then the green part is the shuttle. And inside there is actually a brass uh, threaded uh, part. So here is it being run a little bit. And this was just early on when I was testing it just to see how it worked. You'll notice a little bit of wobble in the Acme screw or the jack screw there because the coupler I made between the 12-volt motor and that was not very true yet and was kind of frustrating because I want everything to be as straight as it can. But hey, if it works, it works, right? But you can see it's striking the limit switches and it worked flawlessly. But you've also got to think about the controller and the load you're going to put on it. And I'll show you in a minute, but I did some really heavy load testing to make sure I wasn't over-amping the system. You also got to think about where the attachment points for the struts and how that's going to work. Those, those bolts go all the way through to the firewall. The ABS wouldn't be strong enough just to hold the torque that goes on that strut right there. Uh, there's a lot of a strength here, folks. That's the reason I use an Acme screw. I mean, I think there was about 35 pounds of force that I tested at max. So here we see one of the first mock-up tests with just 3D printed struts that I had put weights in. Okay. Uh, actually, I poured melted wax in it. So because those are hollow. But this was just me making sure the geometry geometry worked. Nothing was binding making sure that my controller wasn't over amping. This was just really important because folks, when I'm building something for a friend, I want this to work hundreds of times, not just five times. Okay, it's really important that this has repeatability. And also you've seen, I, I tested right there where I aborted retracting the landing gear. Sometimes we want to retract the landing gears as soon as we get in the air with a model airplane. We don't want to make that landing gear cycle all the way up and then cycle all the way down. We want to be able to stop midstream and put the landing gear back down. Okay, so that was one of the really important things I wanted to make sure worked on this. But I probably have 30 hours, <laughs> believe it or not, of testing of this mechanism over a couple of months. In this angle, I was just wanting to see what was going on with the two struts or actuator struts, as I call them, that pull up the struts that actually pull the landing gear up. You'll notice some of this isn't exactly pulling the same distances. And that is something that drove me nuts. So if you have one of these struts that are just a millimeter off, when you start to think about some of the moment arms that are, that are moving here, the moment arm will move a whole lot more on one than the other. Now, this was the finished product here in this video, and this is the one I did all my load testing on. And I actually put uh, five pound weights where each wheel went to test it. And I don't, I, I, how do I say this? I never broke or damaged anything. I did have one of my uh, 12 volt motors start to make a little bit of a weird noise. But keep in mind, I have a drawer full of 12-volt motors. Some of these motors are 15 years old. So once I swapped out the 12-volt motor with another one, um, then that went away. I really like this next angle right here. I'm not sure why, but I, I just wanted to see where the struts mounted to the wing, which is a really important uh, geometry uh, challenge, okay? Do not mount your hard points in the wing when you've got geometry like this until you get the system completely designed and hung in the airplane because you may have to shim things. And it's just really, really important that you understand uh, that you're going to be fiddle -far fiddle farting around with this thing until you get all of it perfect so that it will retract into the fuselage perfect and it will retract uh, when it's down you've got the toe uh, at zero on these wheels, okay? So it's just really important that you are patient and you take your time. And when I talk about the importance of where it attaches in the wing, folks, if this is off any at all, it's going to make the landing gear uh, strut legs swing forward or backwards, or it's going to tilt it left or right. This has to really be perfect. And my buddy, when he put it in his airplane, it didn't fit right. And he got a little bit frustrated. And I said, look, you need to shim this thing. This is going to be the most critical part for you to get to this work. And ultimately, he got it to work perfect. And he was just, 
uh, ecstatic that it worked as good as it did. And I was too, folks. To, to be honest, this was one of the coolest challenges I ever took on because uh, I had heard of the Brewster Buffalo, but I didn't know anything about the landing gear and how the landing gear worked. It was really kind of an intimidating task to take on. Here's another angle of me just testing. And um, yeah, I would just sit in my shop while I was, you know, watching something on Netflix or something and just cycle this thing up and down. And, you know, I was really thinking about building a little, having my friend Berger build me a little controller so I could just cycle it. But I got lazy and never got to the point of doing that. So now what I want to talk about is the landing gear actuating struts. And these are 4130 chromoly steel uh, parts and pieces I got from a master car. I cut out the steel with my steel band saw. I brazed all of this. This is before I had my TIG welder. And brazing is great. I wouldn't silver solder any of this. I don't think it would be strong enough because there's a lot of force on some of these moment arms. But everything I did on this was 3D printed or I bought the parts from a master car. You know, it was really, it was time consuming and it was a head scratcher. But ultimately, out of a 0 to 10, I would say difficult level was about a 7 or an 8. It wasn't impossible. But that's it, folks. So thanks for watching my videos. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. And make sure you get a kid flying. Rock on.